Hey, so uh, I'm going to be talking about um, asthma um, and a couple of cell types that kind of cause asthma symptoms, um, which are epithelial cells that cause the uh, airway inflammation and um, excess mucus and airway narrowing. Um, inhaled stimuli cause the epithelial cells to secrete the cytokines, TSLP, um, interleukin-25 or IL-25, um, and IL-33, and, and those act on uh, sub-epithelial dendritic cells, mast cells, and innate lymphoid cells um, to recruit the hemato uh, hematopoietic cells and cause the release of T helper 2 um, or TH2 cytokines. Um, stimuli can also um, activate afferent nerves in the airway epithelium that can release peptide mediators and trigger reflex release of uh, acetylcholine from afferent fibers in the vagus nerve and, and this response gets bigger when there's also subsets of T cells that um, secrete cytokines and they act on epithelial and smooth muscle cells and drive the symptoms. So in this figure, um, uh, this is kind of like the how the cells really communicate in the airway wall of an asthmatic patient. Um, so you know you have your allergens or your triggers um, and they act on the airway afferent nerves and airway epithelial cells to initiate a response in multiple cell types that contribute to the um, mucus metaplasia and airway smooth muscle contraction. Um, epithelial cells release TSLP and IL um, interleukin-33 which act on airway dendritic cells and IL uh, 25, which um, together will, um, with IL-33 acts on mast cells, basophil, uh, basophils, and um, innate type, type 2 lymphocytes. Um, and these secreted products stimulate dendritic cell uh, maturation and facilitates the generation of effector T cells and triggers the release of both um, direct bronchoconstrictors and Th2 cytokines from innate immune cells. Um, and uh, which kind of feed back on both epithelial and airway smooth muscle and uh, they help amplify uh, the airway inflammation and through the subsequent um, adaptive T cell responses. Um, just to kind of head on a little bit of the biology of the cells um, for the epithelium, um, the, you know, there's ciliated in um, the circulatory cell types and they maintain the mucociliary action which is important for airway pain C um, and def defense against our pathogens um, that we inhale. Um, cilia <coughs> are covered with mucins, uh, mucopolysaccharides that exclude mucus from periciliary space and enhance formation of a mucus layer. Um, circulatory cells uh, create a class of mucins, um, the polymeric gel forming mucins um, the two major airway gel forming mucins are um, MUC5AC and MUC5B. Um, some circulatory cells, like mucus or goblet cells, produce mucins and store them within the mucin granules, but other cells uh, produce and secrete the mucins um, but lack the prominent granules. Um, the gel forming mucins are secreted into the airway and lumen and create a, like a visco elastic property for the, um, the mucus gel layer. Um, so if we have um, epithelial injury, um, we'll typically have remodeling. So th there's changes um, that include airway wall thickening, um, epithelial hypertrophy, mucus metaplasia, um, myofibroblast hyperplasia, subepithelial fibrosis, um, some muscle cell hyperplasia and hypertrophy. So airway remodeling is pretty much going um, is it pretty much like an ongoing tissue injury caused by stimulate um, stimuli. Um, signs of injury are loss of epithelial integrity, disruption of tight junctions, um, cell death, um, impaired barrier function, mucus metaplasia, and subepithelial fibrosis. The um, in epithelium is both a site where uh, there's production of the mediators and a source of cells that respond to mediators produced by immune cells and other cells within the airway. Um, and the contributions to the TH2 um, responses, so um, TH2 cytokines play a huge role in asthma, um, and TSLP, GM, CSF, uh, uh, interleukin-1, interleukin-25, and 33 are made by the epithelium and create these uh, CH2 um, cytokines. <coughs> 
Um, and there's interleukin-13, 33, and TSLP and asthma. And, um, interleukin-13 is made by innate lymphoid cells. Um, IL-13 causes um, changes in airway epithelial uh, mRNA and miRNA expression patterns in airway epithelial cells. The IL-13-induced protein periostin um, is secreted basally from airway epithelial cells and can be used as a biomarker for Th2 high asthma. Um, half asthmatics are Th2 high and respond really well to corticosteroids or anti interleukin 13 antibodies. Um, mucus metaplasia um, for, um, at, well, uh, for severe asthmatics, as we know, um, obstruct, uh, which obstructs airflow, and this is obviously because of the um, increased mucin production and secretion change in mucin cross-linking. Um, also for mucus clearance and mucus gel hydration. Um, and uh, mucus metaplasia results from more production and storage of mucins and secretory cells and lots of different stimuli and signaling pathways which regulate the production and secretion of the airway um, epithelial cells. So the um, Intraleukin-13 on airway epithelial cells causes muco uh, mucus metaplasia and in patients with Th2 high asthma have high levels of um, bronchoepithelial cell. Um, MUC5AC and mRNA uh, compared with healthy patients with Th2 low asthma. Um, so a study showed that um, MUC5AC helps with the clearance of enteric uh, nematode infections and prevents against influenza. Um, if we have an increase MUC5AC, um, it's part of an immune response that contributes to the host defense against the pathogen. Um, and the fact that um, MUC5B is required for uh, normal mucociliary clearance and defense against airway infection tells me that um, we should pay attention to decreases in MUC5B because it is a big contributor to airway dysfunction and asthma. Um, the interleukin-13 is recognized by uh, surface receptors, including airway epithelial cells. Um, the airway um, epithelial cell interleukin-13 receptor that's important for mucus metaplasia is a uh, heterodimer um, made up on the IL-13 RA1 and IL-4 uh, A. Um, in this picture, um, the IL-13, well this is pretty much um, uh, the IL-13 um, induced mucus metaplasia, so IL-13 kind of binds the to its receptors on the surface of the mucus cell um, progenitors and uh, leading to phosphorylation of the STAT6 and translocation of STAT6 hetero heterodimers um, to the nucleus. And that's where they will um, they'll bind to promoters of the STAT6 response genes. STAT6-dependent processes that contribute to mucus uh, metaplasia are the um, CLCA1-dependent pathway, um, a serpent-dependent pathway, and a 15-lipo-oxygenase-1 uh, uh, dependent pathway. And the transcription factor, um, SPDEF, is a, uh, is a master regulator of mucus cell differentiation and, and inhibits the FOXA2 um, that represses mucus cell differentiation and uh, helps activate transcription of other genes that are expressed in mucus cells. Um, as far as a secretory pathway in mucus cells, um, the mucin monomers are pretty big proteins, and they need a lot of processing in the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, and the Golgi. So each mucin mon uh, monomer has about 200 cysteine residues, and that can help with the uh, intra and intermolecular uh, sulfide bonds. Um, the endoplasmic reticulum of mucus cells has special molecules that are required for processing of mucins. Um, one of these is the anterior gradient 2, or the AGR2. Uh, homolog and an active site cysteine residue in AGR2 forms mixed disulfide bonds with mucins in the endoplasmic reticulum. <clears throat> in a study, they actually found um, uh, allergic uh, asthma AGR2 deficient mice have uh, a lot less mucus production, and that's associated with activation of the unfolded uh, protein response. So AGR2 AGR2 could have a direct role in um, mucin folding or um, uh, any other type of function necessary for maintaining normal function of the mucus cell uh, in the plastic reticulum. Um, another molecule would be uh, 
inositol requiring enzyme 1B or IRE 1B, uh, and that's a transmembrane ER stress uh, sensor, and it's found in mucus producing cells in the intestine and the airways, and it regulates the AGR2 transcription. And throughout the airways, um, basal secretion accounts for a lot of the mucin release. Uh, mucus cells found in larger airways of humans have accumulations of mucin containing granules um, that can be released by different stimulation or, and like uh, P2Y2 receptor ligands, ATP and UTP and protease that cleave the protease activated receptors. <clears throat> um, in a study where that animals lacking um, MUNC132, they accumulate mucin in secretory cells that normally have um, really little amounts of intracellular mucin but can secrete mucin when there's a stimulation. Um, Agonist-stimulated stimu uh, agonist secretion also depends on the IL-13 um, inducible calcium activated chloride channel, the TMEM16A, and that's uh, which increase in mucus cells with asthmatics. And it seems like um, qualitative defects in mucin processing, um, hydration or secretion that affect the physio um, chemical properties of mucus um, that contribute to the airway obstruction. Um, epithelial transport of water um, and ions is really important in maintaining the normal properties of mucus. Um, if there's like quick secretion um, of stored mucin that can cause that I mean that can cause there to be a concentrated rubbery mucus that it's really that would make it really hard to um, be able to be coughed out or cleared normally by our cilia. Um, so that means the interleukin thirteen and other asthma mediators that affect airway epithelial cell um, uh, I just lost them. That can affect airway epithelial cell water and ion transport, um, and that can contribute to our airway obstruction. As far as, uh, and just to quickly hit on um, or talk about the the structure of the cilia, um, it's it for if there's any if the cilia cells have um, any abnormalities. It really does cause and mean um, severe asthma because it means increased numbers of dead cells and loss of epithelial structure. Um, this means that the ciliary dysfunction may be a consequence of the epithelial injury, which causes impaired mucociliary clearance, right? Um, but anyway, moving on, um, for the biology of our airway smooth muscle, um, most of us kind of relate asthma to narrow airways, um, which can cause, you know, SOB, shortness of breath, respiratory failure, possibly death. Um, this is due to the contraction of the bands of the smooth muscle present in the walls of the conducting airways in the lung. Um, contraction of smooth muscle, um, which can be physiologically induced um, by release of acetylcholine from efferent parasympathetic nerves or by release of histamine and cystelline uh, leukotrienes from mast cells and basophils cause the airway um, narrowing. Um, and physiological response um, to release the acetylcholine from efferent nerves or release of the histamine leukotrienes from mast cells and basophils cause only mild narrowing in um, the healthy lung. <coughs> um, however, asthmatics have a marked increase in sensitivity to agonists that can cause airway resistance and drops in um, our, you know, their maximal expiratory airflow rates. Um, and the studies make it pretty clear that all allergic humans release similar amounts of bronchoconstrictors into the airways, like, you know, our histamines, but only asthmatics develop uh, that exaggerated airway narrowing in response to those mediators. Um, as far as, uh, you know, regulating generation of force by airway to muscle, actin myosin coupling, um, force generation by airway smooth muscle is uh, mediated by interactions between actin and myosin that depend on phosphorylation of the myosin light chain by the serin 3 and uh, kinase myosin light chain kinase. And this process is, uh, isn't re is kind of negatively uh, regulated by myosin phosphatase. Um, when there's increase in intracellular calcium concentration in smooth muscle cells, um, it causes contraction by two parallel pathways. Uh, when it's bound to calcium and the 
serin, threonin, uh, kinase, cal, modulin directly uh, phosphorylates and that activates myosin like uh, chain kinase. An increased uh, calcium also increases GTP loading of the GTPase. Uh, RHOA, um, I think, which increases activity of its own downstream effector kinases, RHO associated called um, coil contain protein kinases 1 and 2, um, or as I kind of wrote down, ROC uh, 1 and 2. And ROCs are directly phosphorylate uh, myosin light chain phosphatase, um, an effect that inactivates the phosphatase, um, which that kind of further enhances the myosin phosphorylation. Um, RHOA uh, can also be active, activated independently of increases in intracellular calcium. So as far as the drawing, um, it's kind of showing this, uh, the pathways for signaling um, resp uh, for the airway smooth uh, muscle contraction. Um, so the force generated by a uh, cyclic cross-bridging of actin um, and smooth muscle myosin that uh, depends on the myosin phosphorylation. Uh, the myosin phosphorylation is really regulated by the cyclic increases in the cytosolic calcium and that um, the activate uh, the cal modulin, which is the CAM, to phosphorylate myosin light chain uh, kinase, which is the MLCK, um, which directly phosphorylates uh, myosin. So in parallel, the small GTPase RHOA um, is activated by both the calcium-dependent independent pathways. Um, RHO directly activates RHO-associated coiled whole protein kinase, or ROC. Um, and, that, uh, and then that phosphorylates and thereby inactivates the, um, the MLCP, or also the myosin light chain phosphatase. Uh, which normally dephosphorylates myosin. And the most important pathway for increasing cytosolic calcium airway smooth muscle involves the activation of the, um, the G-alpha-Q by um, G-protein coupled receptors. The response to extra extracellular contractile agonists such as the methylcholine, methylcholine um, or the MSCH, serotonin, um, which is the 5-HT, and histamine. And the G-alpha-Q activates phospholase, uh, phospholipase, uh, PLC beta, um, which generates the IP3 to bind to IP3 receptors on the um, sarcoplasmic reticulum and release the calcium. So um, overall, um, we've really made a lot of progress um, that's been made, I guess. Um, towards identifying epithelial and smooth muscle cell molecules and pathways um, that can produce many of the abnormalities found in asthmatics. And even though we have a, come a long way, we still have a hard time really understanding how these molecules and pathways uh, interact and being able to identify the pathways that are really most relevant um, to our asthmatic patients. Um, you know, as, asthma is a heter heterogeneous uh, disease and Pro, um, I mean, trying to find progress toward figuring out the subtypes with certain pathophysiological uh, mechanisms um, promises to focus attention on certain pathways in epithelial smooth muscle cells. So it's really important for us to understand those mechanisms so we can really um, understand the underlying cause for the severe asthma. Um, about roughly... I would say probably five to seven percent of asthmatics. I mean, I don't really know. Probably it's probably a low amount um, of asthmatics are pretty severe um, with symptoms that are pretty persistent, despite the fact that they're you know they're using their standard bronchodilators and corticosteroids at home, um, and they still have a lot of um, asthma exacerbations that makes them come back to the hospital. Um, you know, makes them very susceptible to being very high risk for, uh, you know, very fatal asthma attacks. You know, I've, I've, I've seen asthma patients go on ECMO. I mean, we've, you know, we have Heliox, you know, we do lots of quite invasive procedures for these very, um, severe asthmatic patients. Um, you know, I see it all the time. I mean, for my hospital, that's our number one admitting diagnosis. So, 
I mean, I think it's really important that we have to continue to study the cell biology of asthma to help us kind of find out new ideas for as far as prevention, you know, and um, treatment based on, you know, possibly normalizing the epithelial and smooth muscle uh, function. And that's about it. These are my references. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening.